If we can get any weakness in futures on Monday because of the headline, let's just assume they don't get anything done uh, from this broadcast till the open and we gap down, I think this will be the absolute gift of all gifts for us. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, weekend update. Hope everybody is having a great uh, weekend. Hope everybody is getting a good rest. Uh, Bulls did their job, guys. Uh, really great uh, showing by the Bulls. We've been kind of breaking down levels pretty much every single day. Uh, we talked about the levels that the Qs, again, we'll concentrate on the Qs right now, just because, again, it's, it's a proxy for the majority of the names that we trade. Um, but it, it's, it's been a great job by the Bulls ever since they reclaimed the supply. Uh, every dip has been defended, especially in the rising 10-day moving average you saw right here. And those two channels were defended by news that Democrats and Republicans were far off uh, a stimulus agreement. And when you look at what happened towards the end of the week, again, big, big levels got reclaimed. Uh, we talked about this uh, 282, 283 level by the bulls reclaimed. Uh, SPX, we've been talking about this 34 and a quarter level, pretty much a nausea. And that was the top of the channel here, reclaimed. And all this strength was attributed to a possible compromise as early as this weekend, or as late as Monday or Tuesday, uh, that a deal was going to get done. And again, you saw incredible moves uh, both in the S&P uh, and the Dow, up over 3%, and the NASDAQ Composite was up nearly 5%, I think 4.6% for the week. So the strength was incredible. Um, I think going into tomorrow's session, uh, there was a headline that just came across a few minutes ago, and the headline basically reads that uh, the Democrats and Republicans are not close uh, to a stimulus deal. I think this is um, an incredible, incredible gift from the market gods. If you saw, if you've been following the market the whole week, especially in tech, and again, I understand all the other indexes have been very, very strong, you've noticed uh, a common denominator the whole week. Big aggressive move, next day rest. Big aggressive move, next day rest. Friday was the big aggressive move. So now that we've completely remounted this whole channel here that started all the way back on September the 9th, okay, and we closed above it, now the SPX just needs to reclaim 3482 and we go back to all-time highs. If you look at the Qs, all we need to do right now is reclaim this upper Bollinger Band uh, around this 286 level and we go back to all-time highs. So we're set up, okay? And the idea that if we can get any weakness in futures on Monday because of the headline, let's just assume they don't get anything done uh, from this broadcast till the open and we gap down, I think this will be the absolute gift of all gifts for us on Monday. And if we can get any aggressive gap down, two, 300 points, the stocks that broke out on Friday, they will be, uh, in my opinion, okay? I think they will be uh, Christmas presents on October the 12th. And if you look at the breakouts, right, on, on you know, just for the week, you had Amazon. Again, we've been talking about Amazon and nausea, levels on Amazon and nausea. It finally broke out, right? It took out this whole channel that again started on September the 11th. They have Prime Day coming up. The only thing that stopped it was this uh, upper Bollinger Band. And we talked about that 3280 level uh, all day in the live webinar, all day uh, on the private feed. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. So we kind of knew where it was going to stop. But if this thing gaps down on Monday, it's a gift. It's an absolute gift. It has to be bought on the rising 60-minute support. Uh, Apple, right? Look at Apple. We've been talking about Apple. It finally broke above this channel here and closed right at the top of the range. They also have some sort of event. I think they have an, I think, I think the, the chatter is, or maybe it's confirmed, I just don't remember, that they're introducing a new iPhone, right? Possibly on their October 13th event. If this thing gaps down, right, all you got to look is, is, and again, my, my charts are still messed up from the Tesla spl split and the Apple split, but any move into this rising support needs to be bought. So again, I think, again, we're, we're possibly looking at gifts and absolute gifts uh, from the Democrats, from the Republicans uh, come Monday morning. Again, really, really aggressive move. A stock like FSLY that's had a phenomenal, phenomenal move. Okay, any dip. 
needs to be bought. So that's kind of the theme. And what I like going into Monday's session is, I don't think we're gonna see, un unless you are an incredibly naive, inexperienced, very limited funded trader, nobody should be even thinking about panicking on Monday's open if we do indeed uh, get a you know get a pretty good gap a uh, pretty good gap down. I, I think it'll be orderly. I think it'll be bought, and the strong names that especially broke out on Friday, especially into the close, they will uh, get bought. So uh, I thought the week was uh, pretty damn good. The only two days that weren't like rock stars were the days of the market consolidated. And as much as we are um, you know intraday traders and we love we love the intraday channels some days and again we, we've been talking about this in nausea some days when the market rests again it's great for the market it's incredibly healthy but for us if we don't get those opportunities that day we just don't get that opportunity and thursday's session okay was a complete snooze fest there's a difference between having a choppy session or a day of rest for thursday was just completely rest session and i didn't even record a video from Thursday night because it was literally the same game plan that we had Wednesday into Thursday, Thursday into Friday. So, you know, we, we you know, I, I pretty much took a rest day on Thursday night, didn't record a video. Uh, and I said basically to everybody in the live webinar and on the Twitter feed, whatever we have for, for Thursday setups, just switch into Friday. And that's the whole point of trading, guys. You want to trade, but you don't need to trade. You want to trade, but you don't have to trade. You only want to trade when the market is giving you good value. Thursday, we had a very, very quiet session. But what was great about it is the index is completely built and more built and more built to reclaim major, major levels and set us up for exactly the same pivots we were looking for going into Thursday session, into Friday. And when they confirmed, really, really aggressive things happen. And let's talk about the pivots. Um, again, obviously, Going into tomorrow, uh, if we don't get any uh, stimulus news, like I said th four times already, I, I think it will be a gift on any single gap down. Um, I think the stronger names you have to watch. I think you have to concentrate on names that are not overbought yet. Uh, look at a lot of the, you know, look at a lot of data names, the cloud names. Uh, look at a lot of the stay-at-home names. Uh, ZM broke out on Friday. Uh, it needs one more channel to confirm, and I think we're going to see the 52-week high there. Um, so concentrate on those names. Watch a stock like a Facebook. Watch a stock like an Apple that Apple confirmed on Friday, but Facebook is very, very close. Don't concentrate on the names like a Beyond that had this majestic run. Okay, those are the names that get pulled first. Pay attention to the names that have just been consolidating out of the channel, either closed up the first day above the channel or is ready to, to confirm. So for example, right, so here is Apple, right? Apple just confirmed this channel, right? So this is, it just needs to confirm Friday's highs. Amazon confirmed this channel. So all it needs to do is confirm Friday's highs. But if you look at a stock like Facebook, right? Facebook still needs to confirm this upper channel here, right? It needs to still uh, get above this range. If you look at Microsoft right now, again, big difference, right? Microsoft just traded right into the channel. So if this channel gets confirmed, this is what you want to concentrate for Monday. Names like NVIDIA, okay, already had their big runs. Beyond, okay, already had their big runs. And again, all they're doing is gapping and grinding. But if you notice throughout the week, the stocks that had the biggest runs, and again, it's no fault of their own, but those are the stocks in the middle of the day, like a Roku, like a NVIDIA, like a Beyond. Those are the ones who are getting aggressively pulled first. Again, bids were, were, were coming up on those rising channels and those dips were being bought. But again, if you are looking to especially put on new positions intraday, you're looking for the ones that are just about to confirm or confirm the previous day, trying to confirm the previous channel. So it's very, very important. So if you look at Friday's session, uh, pretty clean right pretty clean very aggressive again you'll start seeing exactly the same thing uh the stay-at-home stocks uh the data right the data cloud stocks were very very strong um and some you know some names we've been watching for a very long time this was definitely my trade of the day uh we've been talking about the zm channel man for like three weeks i just couldn't figure out why this thing wasn't breaking it finally broke it confirmed the five day moving average it just needs one more day guys one more day and we saw mizuhu mizuhu uh, come out with a 550 price target on the stock, saying the stock, despite a 600% run this year, say that again out loud, uh, is still relatively cheap. And they're kind of right. Again, you might say whatever you want about Zoom, it doesn't deserve, no stock deserves to be where they are. 
okay? And at the same time, fair value is the last trade. So try to figure that out, right? Uh, there's no such thing as overbought. There's no such thing as oversold. The four o'clock print is, is the, the true nature of the stock. If there's a buyer that's willing to pay 500 and there's a seller who's willing to pay 500, that is fair value. So again, before anybody turns around and say, well, the stock is crazy, the stock's a dog, it doesn't belong here. Okay, again, our opinions mean absolutely nothing. Please pay attention to price action, it pays much better. So you can see here, we talked about this range here, it finally got above this range. Uh, trade it to about 500. If it could just reclaim this 500, right? If it could reclaim the 500, I think we're going to see 52 week highs. So I really like uh, Zoom, but a beautiful $9 move on Zoom. Uh, Chewy, again, another stay at home stock. Again, for all you guys who don't use Chewy, it's awesome. If you have pets, uh, we've been using Chewy awesome. We've been on this, um, I think it's a monthly, I think my wife has it on a monthly. Uh, automatic repurchase. So Chewy's a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal company for uh, pets. Uh, 59.50 uh, needs to build. Here was Chewy, right? So here was Chewy, took out this whole 59.50 channel, uh, traded up to almost 62. I still like it. I think if it confirms this channel here, I still like it. I think there's a shot against the 65, 67. Uh, so that was good. Tesla is one of the names that still needs to come out of the channel. Again, this is the big number here, this 440 level. And again, since it's out there, let me just sh share with you the chart. Uh, this 440 level is pretty big. If you notice here, it keeps on getting rejected at this whole level. If it could start reclaiming this whole level here, I mean, you have room to 460. So again, it's very, very close. And again, that's the value we're, we're paying attention to uh, going into this week. Uh, JKS, man, talk about a stock that, again, people are saying for 30 points already, the stock is overbought. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, right? But the point is, okay, if it was overbought here and overbought here, well, what the hell do you call this? And again, everybody's looking for the bottom, but at least we, excuse me, everybody's looking for the top, but at least you have a definitive area now, okay? I don't believe uh, stepping in front of a moving train, it makes no sense. When this stock finally has a blow off top, the five day is gonna lose, right? It's gonna lose the five day you confirm it. If you notice here, every single time they hit, they hit the five day, what happens? Bounce 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 so again at least we have a point of reference here you don't need to try to pick a bottom on a, on a runaway missile like this okay just wait for it to confirm the bottom channel okay bottom channel of the rising five-day moving average okay take it take it as a short and use the high of days to stop it if you're still wrong that means the stock is still strong and again the easiest thing to do is try to overthink trades guys that's why i keep on saying there's no such thing as overbought oversold it's just over opinionated and overthought and that and that's a, it's a very very dangerous combination it's very easy to blow out your account so be careful be very very careful uh jd i still like um 79.50 79.75 uh, needs to build. If you look at JD's chart, it's trying to pull in, right? It's trying. So it closed at 79.75. I uh, traded over 80. I still like this thing, okay? I, I think all it needs is one big volume burst. Uh, I know they've been coming in really, really aggressive with size on those uh, November... November 80 calls. They've been putting in millions of dollars. If you go through your option chains, you'll see crazy order flow on JD. Uh, but I, I still like this thing. It's close. This is the first close above the range. Uh, it looks good. All it needs is one expansion day, and this thing can go back to 86. So keep definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, Netflix, nice move on Netflix. 539 needs to build. Again, you're not gonna you're, you're not gonna see. Uh, one of these 10 star moves just because the stock already broke out above this level. But yeah, 539 uh, went to 544. Nice move on Netflix. Uh, FSOY broke out this week. Huge. It just, it's, it's been an absolute rock star of a stock uh, this past week. 120 needs to build to test previous highs. Uh, here was FSLY. And again, this is where we talk about sneaky pivots, guys. Uh, here's the sneaky pivot. You see this whole channel here, right? This is the whole channel here, 120. It confirmed 120, took out 122.54, and went all the way up to 129. Just an absolute monster uh, of a stock. Um, I deleted. I deleted this. Uh, I, I deleted this company. It was. Uh, it was W. I think W got upgraded. But I looked at the daily chart and I said 315 is supply. So I go. I'm. De I'm deleting the tweet. Uh, again, Tesla. I still really, really, really like ZM. Huge. It was a big, big move on ZM. Uh, big move on Netflix. It came in the 550 weekly buyers. Uh, MKLA, uh, it got down to that 24 level. It still needs to build below. I, I think the stock is getting tired again. And I kept on saying, oh my God, because we saw some really incredible candles uh, being put up right away in ZM and Netflix. Um, really, really strong. And FSLY, really, really strong out the gate. 
Here's another perfect example of the cloud uh, data names being very, very strong. Uh, DDOG, 109.75, 110 uh, needs to build. Here was DDOG, right? So look at, the, look at the pivot here, right? It took out this whole channel here, 109.75. And we said there was a shot to get to 1314, right to the linear regression line, traded up to 14 and a half. Really, really big move there uh, as well. Uh, DDOG, perfect. Uh, yeah, they, you know, they, they, they started coming in right away with the 120 call buyers, also the 113 weeklies. So very, very strong move. Again, complemented on order flow right away. Here comes Chewy. And this is where I, I, I put in right before towards the end of the day. And Apple closed perfectly right at that level, 1680.17. So again, fingers crossed, guys. If there is absolutely no deal done and we get, uh, a, we get a gift of a gap down, all the value will be to the upside. You know, every single value will be to the upside. Amazon, Apple, ZM, uh, FSLY, anything that, if you look at your charts today and, and, you, and you really go look for them thoroughly and you see what broke out, the Microsofts of the world, those are the ones you want to buy on that dip into the rising 60 minute support. Because again, if we do get a gift, there's a great high probability you'll probably get a Trump tweet at some point during the day that said, look, we want to get a deal done. We're going to get a deal done. That's been the kind of the formula. Demic, you know, they, they've been giving negative statements. They bring down the market and then followed by a positive statement either later in the day or the following day to get it back up. So again, fingers crossed. Guys, have a great, great remainder of your Sunday. Get some rest. Make sure you definitely continue to put in this work. And with God's help, I'll see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.